this is Stephanie Calvert. And you're listening to Play That Rock and Roll. Let's circle back to Starship here. Let's talk about okay. your, your time with the band. When you first got started with them, when they offered you the gig, I suspect you know the first thing you had to do was uh, reacclimate yourself or refamiliarize yourself with uh, Grace Slick and her singing style. And tell me about the experience of studying what she had done in the past and maybe integrating it into your own style what was it like trying to find that balance to give an you know an appropriate presentation of you know the music that she recorded but not being like uh you know like a a replay of it you know like your own style right well uh i think when i and i know i've said this in a couple interviews i know that when i first joined the band those are huge shoes to fill. And yeah. when people go to see an iconic band at some point, because Starship and Jefferson Starship and Jefferson Airplane, they have, they're a staple in rock and roll, especially back in the 60s and 70s. And so, especially Grace, she's an icon as a female rocker. She really changed and paved the way for a lot of women. And for me, I'm completely different than than Grace Slick. Like, she's very psychedelic. I'm very not psychedelic. I'm a little edgier. Um, you know, I never did drugs. I'm like, I was going to say, <laughs> you're, you're probably sober. <laughs> super sober. Um, I don't have any, like, I've, you know, crazy road stories, you know. Um, but I thought when I first joined that I had to be more like her. I had mm. to sound more like her if I could. So when I first joined, I remember thinking those things and trying to emulate her as much as I could. But after a while, it just felt I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be more like me so that people got more of a tribute to her versus me trying to copy her. Right. You see, because there's no way I can do that. There's no way that I will ever know what it's like to be in her place walking around. I don't, you know, whatever she was doing at the time, she was, like I said, very in tune with, you know, hippie world and psychedelic. And, you know, maybe she was doing drugs during a performance. I have no idea. Uh, but I don't know that side of things. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, well, I'm going to, I'm more edgy and I'm more gritty. So why don't I just kind of throw my own spin on it, but still keeping it as close to her as possible. I tease Grace, but in all sincerity, she is my absolute favorite uh, classic rock female vocalist of all time. She's one of my favorite artists yeah. ever. So that's why I... Yeah, you know, and so when I saw you guys uh, back in 2010, I remember paying very close attention to your performance because even then I thought to myself, I hope you don't come out and try and just mimic what she did and like not acknowledge that she's not in the band anymore. I was really hoping that you would do something more original and you did, and that's why I enjoyed that show. And that's why, you know, I'm interested to hear your story because like I know there's some uh, artistic input here that you're doing and it, it's different than you know and not to be disrespectful about tribute shows but it, it you know you made that role your own and you were in that band uh, longer than she was yeah. <laughs> a little bit longer did you ever get a chance to meet her did you ever cross paths with her no i no i you know it's so sad because there was a moment where she was in Las Vegas with her paintings. And I remember I had been on this massive run of shows and I got off the plane and I had to go to this, um, not that I had to go, but I volunteered at, at my church to feed the homeless. Right. And I was walked off the plane. I thought I was going to pass out. 
because I was exhausted. But I was like, I already, I said I would be down there. So went down there and I was going to go afterwards to see her at this place. And I, I was so exhausted. And that was my one moment where I could have probably met her. I was so tired from all of the traveling and all of that stuff that it was my one moment. And I missed out, but that was, that was the one time that I could have probably met her and I didn't. I'm sad about it. Well, yeah, but you know, what you were doing was for a good cause. So there's, (laughs) you know, nothing to be ashamed about there. I could have done all of it, uh, but I didn't. I was like, oh, okay. Well, that's, it's sort of interesting that, because she didn't have, she didn't maintain any sort of relationship with Mickey or the other guys in the band, right? She, she did with Mick. Um, oh, like, did she? Yeah, not like they talk every day. Yeah, but they had a decent relationship. Um, they had a. They were definitely. They can call. Like if he had an issue or something, he can call her up. They talked on the phone. I remember when oh, okay. uh, a commercial came up and the they were using the music that both of them had been part of, and they had to decide, you know, what they wanted to do with the money or something like that. But so they've talked. You know, business wise, they were they were on a good good level of friendship so i know that they did speak to each other still